Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this next video, we're going to look at how to create rejection regions for our hypothesis testing. So what I've given us is I've given us a set of hypothesis statements, a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. And then I've given us what is called a level of significance. So when it comes to a level of significance, this is telling us how strict do we need to be when deciding to reject or not reject. So depending on the type of claim that you're working with, you might need to be more strict. Let's say, for example, you're working with a claim about whether a new medication works better than a previous one. Well, in that case, you need to be really, really careful. And so your level of significance would have to be a very, very small. On the other hand, if you're checking a claim about, let's say, just an advertiser's claim, well, maybe that's not so serious. And so we could relax a little bit on our testing. So this level of significance can change. This level of significance is all almost always uh, given by the Greek letter alpha. And alpha is also going to tell us area in the rejection region. So let's take a look. Looking at our hypothesis statements, we need to determine if we are working with a one-sided hypothesis test or a two-sided hypothesis test. The way that we're going to know is we're going to look at our alternative hypothesis. So uh, our null hypothesis tells us what we're working with. So we have a distribution assuming that our parameter is equal to this certain k value. And we are trying to test the alternative hypothesis that our parameter is greater than this some k value. So that means we are working with a one-sided test and we are working with a right-tailed test. Since we are talking about being greater than, we would be on the right. So what this level of significance or alpha value does is it tells us the area in that tail. So the area there is equal to our alpha, or in this case, 5% or 0 0.05. So what we would like to find out is what is the z critical value that goes with an area in the right tail of 0 0.05. Now remember that can be found using inverse normal. So an inverse normal of you would need to give the area to the left which would be 1 minus alpha or 1 minus 0 0.05 which is 0.95 and working with the standard normal distribution, that would be 0, 1. So that would be one of our very familiar values, 1.65. So here's our rejection region. If we get a test statistic that is anywhere greater than 1.65, we would land in the rejection region and be able to reject our null hypothesis. Okay, let's test that out again. So looking at another set of null and alternative hypotheses, this time our null hypothesis says our parameter is equal to some value and our alternative hypothesis says our parameter is less than that value. With a less than alternative hypothesis, we're still working with a one-sided test, but this time we're working with a left-tailed test. We also have a new alpha or new level of significance. So remember that that alpha gives us the area in the tail here. So if we use, again, our inverse normal to find our critical value here, that would be one of our, again, familiar values, in this case negative since it's below, negative 1.28. So our rejection region would be anything with a z-score below negative 1.28. Now, I am in this 
intro video here, assuming that we're working with a normal distribution, but of course we could also be working with a student T distribution, depending on the information we had. If that was the case, instead of doing inverse normal here to find our critical values, we would just be using inverse T. All right, so in those two, we both had one-sided test. Let's look at the little difference that happens if we are talking about a two-sided test. So here, when we have the null and alternative hypothesis that look like equal and not equal to, anytime we see this not equal to, then we are working with a two-sided test. So two-sided means we have area both in the left tail and in the right tail. And so what we need to do is we need to split up this level of significance and put half of it in the lower tail and half of it in the upper tail. So now my area in the lower tail will be alpha over two or 0.1 over two, which is 0 0.05. And the same thing in my upper tail, the area up there will also be 0 0.05. If we were to find our critical Z values, they would be the same, except that the bottom would be negative. So again, an alpha value of 0 0.05, we can either use inverse normal, or that's one of our nice and familiar ones. We would have 1.65 here and negative 1.65 below. So we would have dual rejection regions, one below and one above. If we calculate a test statistic that falls below negative 1.65 or above positive 1.65, then we would be in our rejection region. Okay, so now let's look at this with a more concrete example. Let's say that studies have shown that the mean birth weight for babies in Europe is 3.5 kilograms. You want to create a significance test, which is the same as a hypothesis test, by the way, to see if American babies are larger. You take a random sample of 100 babies and observe a mean birth weight, X bar, of 3.53 kilograms. Using a level of significance of 0 0.01, find the rejection region. So in order to have a rejection region, we first need to have a set of hypothesis statements. So let's start by writing those. Here we are talking about mean birth weights. So the parameter that we're gonna be talking about is mu. Our null hypothesis always has to be a statement of equality. A statement of equality should be here about the status quo. So studies have shown that the mean birth weight in Europe is 3.5. So we're gonna say that our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 3.5. What we're interested in is the claim that we think American babies are larger. So larger would indicate I have an alternative hypothesis of mu greater than 3.5. With a greater than alternative hypothesis, I am working with a one-sided hypothesis test here. And with a greater than, I'm going to be up here on the right. So my area on the right is going to be equal to my significance level. In this case, my alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So I want to figure out what is my Z critical value for this region here. So again, here I can use inverse normal or, you know, 0 0.01 means there's 0.99 below. So it could just be one of my familiar ones. Either way, I get a Z critical value of 2.33. So my rejection region is the region above a Z score of 2.33. All right, let's check that out one more time. 
Let's say that a particular company saw that an average of 48 out of 100 of its employees at a local branch received their flu shot each year. They tried a new advertising strategy in the following year and then took a sample of, sample of members to test if the proportion who received their flu shot had changed. Using a 5% level of significance, find the rejection region. So, in order to find our rejection region, we have to start with hypothesis statements. Here, I'm working with a proportion. So my parameter is going to be P. And we see that an average of 48 out of 100 is what they are expecting. So 48 out of 100 is 0.48. So our null hypothesis is that P equals 0.48. For our alternative hypothesis, we're going to compare P to 0.48, and in this case, they're just interested in whether or not the proportion had changed. So notice here it doesn't say increased or decreased, just says had changed. So we're interested in seeing if P is anything different than or not equal to 0.48. Not equal to means that we are working with a two-sided hypothesis test. So we are going to have area in our rejection region both on the left and on the right. With a significance level of 0.05, that means that there is 1 minus 0 0.05 or 0.95 in the middle, and then half of that on either side. So 0 0.05 over 2 or 0 0.025 in the top and the same in the bottom. So we want to find our positive and our negative critical values for those. So using inverse normal or whatever you are comfortable with if it's just a known value for you. If I use inverse normal there, I get an area of 0.975 or 1 minus 0 0.025 to the left. I have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, and that gives me an upper critical value of 1.96, and so my lower critical would be the same but negative. So my rejection region is anything below a z-score of negative 0.16 and anything above a z-score of 1.96. All right, guys, that does it for this video on how to find rejection regions. Keep following us for our next video on putting everything together and actually performing these hypothesis tests.